Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Mosque here again with another beer review for you today. Now for this one I'm going to do another in my sort of stockpile of brew dog beers that I've accumulated over the last little while. And uh, this is just, I want to get through these before I head off to Germany for a few months. So today we're going to have a look at the Fake Lager which is a bohemian style pilsner and this came out back in March of 2013 I believe this one. So this is one of the older ones actually. But as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a brief history of the brew dog brewery. I've done a number of these beer reviews for you before so you can check out those in the video description if you haven't already seen some of my beer reviews before I hope you go and check these out but I'll focus more on the current events and things at the brewery because I've done a number of these before and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in Brewdog beer there are a number of these beer reviews to come but as I always say if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to go on towards the last part of the video and you will catch the particular segment involved with the tasting there but just to get on with the history of this one here brew Brewdog were founded in 2007 by James Watt and Martin Dickey, the latter of whom is the head brewer at the brewery, but they were both only 24 years old at the time, and their first brewery was at the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraserburgh in the very northeast of Scotland there. I always describe the country as looking like a monster's head just for the benefit of those of you watching outside of Scotland, and Fraserburgh is pretty much right on the tip of the monster's nose in the northeast corner of the country. But Brewdog, if you don't know, are very well known for being a very experimental brewery. They produce a whole host of different styles of beers, a lot of different hops and malt varieties in there and even some random ingredients you're talking lingonberries cloudberries blueberries a whole host of different things in their beer there so if you haven't already tried brew dog beer definitely go and give it a try some really cool stuff in there but they're also very well known for producing some very high strength beer you might have heard of the tokyo star beer which is an 18.2 percent imperial stout and there was actually a bit of a media storm in scotland when the pair produced this beer because they were branded irresponsible for producing such a high strength beer when scotland has a considerable binge drinking culture if you like but they didn't care, they kept on brewing their good beer anyway and they're doing very very well for themselves as a result. But their other strong beers have included the 32% Tactical Nuclear Penguin, the 41% Sink the Bismarck and the 55% End of History and this latter one was actually packaged using squirrels and stoats so they got in trouble from the animal rights people over this one but they didn't care, they just kept brewing anyway as Brewdog tend to do. But these beers were actually produced largely due to an ongoing feud if you like with the Schorschbrau Brewery from Germany and both breweries have held the title of World's Strongest Beer on more than one occasion but they've both actually been beaten hands down quite recently by Brewmeister from Keith, another Scottish brewery who've produced the 65% beer Armageddon and also the 67.5% beer which is called Snake Venom and I think it's very unlikely that this will be beaten anytime soon because it's very difficult once you start brewing to actually go above the 60% mark there. But the brewery are also well known for having had their three Equity for Punk shareholding schemes the first of which uh, helped them grow by 200% during the credit crunch back in 2009 I believe it was they used the second lot to fund their new brewery facility in Ellen which you can go and visit a really cool state of the art modern craft brewing facility and they've actually just closed their third lot of this which helped them raise £14 million so you'll probably see a massive increase in the brewery's infrastructure in the coming years and they'll probably just build a load of new small scale brewing apparatus there they don't like to brew on the big scale and you probably would actually see an increase in the core range of beers. They're quite into producing a, a high number of beers if you like but making them all good quality of course. But they're actually well known as well for having a lot of different brew pubs. Their first of these opened in Aberdeen, their home city in the northeast of Scotland and this opened in October 2010 followed by new sites in Edinburgh and Glasgow in 2011 and also a new site in the Camden area of London there as well. But 2012 also saw them expand into England further with a new site in Shoreditch in London but also uh, brew pubs in Leeds, Nottingham, Manchester, Newcastle, Bristol and Birmingham and the brewery as I mentioned also moved this year to their new facility in Ellen of course which is closer to the city of Aberdeen there but the Fraserburgh Brewing Facility remains as their uh, sort of beer lab if you like and they also produce the high strength stuff there as well but Brewdog are also very well known for actually having been, they've been very pioneering in terms of Sc in Scottish craft brewing if you like, these guys were quite instrumental in Scotland for them actually being allowed to sell beers outside of the pint measurement just due to the strength of things and this has actually helped a number of other craft breweries actually when they're producing higher strength stuff but they're also known as being the largest independently owned brewery in Scotland and they produce 120,000 bottles of beer per month for export all across the world you're talking all throughout Europe the Far East Australia New Zealand North America and South America as well but to move on to the more current events at the brewery they've recently launched their prototype range or experimental range for 2013 and this includes the Hobo Pop which is an American wheat ale with rye the Interstellar which is a red rye IPA and the Brixton Porter 
which was originally intended to coincide with the launch of their Brixton brew pub but this fell through at the last minute and they decided they wanted to brew the beer anyway but you can try these beers and vote for them on the website and the winner of this voting scheme will become a member of the new core range for 2014 I believe and there was also meant to be the armory which was a black lager in this one here but this was pulled out due to the fact that it didn't turn out very well according to the guys in the brew pub in Aberdeen and recently as well they actually launched their two Christmas beers for this year which was the Santa Paws which is a Scotch Ale and the Hoppy Christmas which is a Simcoe IPA but I believe these have both sold out but you can have a look at my reviews for these in the link that I mentioned in the, in the uh, video description there. But they're also planning to open up some new international locations for their brew pubs. This includes Sao Paulo in Brazil, Tokyo in Japan, Berlin in Germany, Rome in Florence in Italy. These have all been confirmed but they're also looking at sites in Brussels in Belgium, Paris in France, Barcelona in Spain and also a number of US states and for new brew pub sites and also some provinces in Canada as well and very recently, this is the most recent event at the brewery, is that they've released a new beer called Moshi Moshi 15 which has been released to celebrate the 15th birthday of Moshi Moshi Records and this one is a 5.2% paleo that has a nice biscuity and caramel malt base and uses Columbus and Centennial hops there so hopefully I can get a hold of one of these, get one of my friends to buy it and just keep it for me. But just before I have a little look at the tasting here, I couldn't find the, uh, the the blog if you like on the that they usually put on the brew and the labels here so I just had to look this up on the website for you here but the blur the blurb for this one if you like says fake lager is our attempt to reclaim one of the world's great beer styles the bohemian pilsner the style or originated in the Czech town of Pilsea Bohemia hence bohemian pilsner in 1842 full flavor all malt with the refreshing zing of noble hops an enlightenment classic it was re revered the world over in the good post-war era monolithic corporate brewers drove the flavour and soul from this beer as they dumbed it down beyond recognition rice corn and other substitutes were combined with huge corner cutting in the brewing process the bastardization, bastardization of the classic style now accounts for a staggering majority of total beer sales globally bland artificial fake we're turning this on its head with our authentic return to the roots of everything the bohemian pilsner should be fake lager is here to put a stop to this culture of bad beer and reclaim the pilsner back for true beer drinkers this bright zesty lager has all the citrus and piney hop notes you would always expect to find in a noble hop bohemian pilsner beer so this is a really interesting one, sorry I was stuttering a little bit there when I was reading that out to you, I can't really see the sort of colours in that one, it's a bit of an odd colour their website there but just to tell you a little bit more about this beer itself, it's a 4.7% Bohemian Pilsner and it was actually released originally as an April Fool's Day prank there's an interesting webpage there that was a fake launch of this one if you like, so I'll put the link to that in the video description there and you can have a little look at it, but it was released as the, as the at the same time as the Hello My Name is Metty Marit and this one is made with only four ingredients, what malts, hops and yeast and this sort of sim seems similar to the German Reinheitsgebot actually which I believe the Czechs Bohemia was a German region at one point so they will brew it in this sort of Reinheitsgebot style usually and there's actually quite a funny video on their blog for when they released this beer and they destroy a lot of macro beers and cans and things like that with fireworks they like they seem to like destroying sort of cans of tenants and things like that in their, uh, in their beer blog there but I'll just let you have a little look at the brewery artwork and stuff like that on this one as you can see, it's the standard brew dog artwork there. As you can see, a 4.7% beer, as it says on the bottle there. Bohemian Pilsner, as pointed out to you at the bottom there. And it's a nice sort of dark sea green, this one here. And the bottle cap is just the standard brew dog blue dog there. But let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting here. As I mentioned, it's a 4.7% Bohemian Pilsner beer, or Pilsen. I believe the, che the Czech word for these beers is Pilsen, so I don't know why people kind of call it Pilsner if you like. But let's get this guy out. As you can see a nice little bit of steam on the opening there, just some bubbles rising to the surface but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste in here. Quite interested to try this one, I tried this one on tap before already and it was very very sort of light if you like, it was quite interesting on the tap version as well and I'm also interested to see how this compares to the 77 Lager, this was an old beer that I really really liked and my friend really liked as well so this one's quite cool. As you can see if I hold this up to the light here it's a really sort of light bright orange golden colour here, I'll just turn the light round a little bit so you can see it better, it's a really sort of bright orangey golden colour here, it's quite hazy as well actually, this is maybe the unfiltered variety if you like, it just has a bit of a half finger of nice white foamy head there, there are some bigger bubbles in there. I can't really see much in the way of carbonation there but as I say a nice sort of bright uh, orangey golden colour here, nice deep orangey golden colour in fact. 
And I do wonder if this is the unfiltered variety rather than the filtered one. I've seen some of people say that these beers are clear and some people have also said that they're hazy as well. So I think there might be two varieties of this one here. But let's give this guy a smell and see how we get on. But yeah, you're getting a nice sort of quite light a nose from the aroma there. You have to breathe it in quite deep to get the notes that you're looking for here. But there's a good hint of citrus in there and some light grassy notes as well. There is a sort of sweet biscuity malt base to this one. And I think I can sort of pick up the quite um, the sort of quite grassy and piney notes there as well. I'm picking up a good little bit of pine resin and it's mixed in with the citrus actually. It's quite interesting. I didn't expect it to be sort of that noticeable. When you talk about sort of Czech Pilsner style beers, they're usually quite mild on the nose. But this one is a fairly is quite a bit pungent if you sort of breathe it in quite deeply. You can just see the head is actually fading on this one to just a light foamy layer at the moment. But there's a nice sort of slight sweetness from those pine and citrusy notes there, but a good bit of sort of sweet biscuity malts as well, and a good bit of grassy character as well. But let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on. As I say with the brew dog beers, just take a little bit to enjoy the aroma from them. They've always got an interesting nose. This is quite a nice one actually. Very different from the 77 Lager I have to say. I've tried this on tap before and the bottled version actually seems to me like it's quite different from the tap beer of course. But yeah, at first taste, it's actually bang on for the Pilsen style of beer. Quite well balanced actually, in fact, I have to say. But there's a good bit of hot bitterness there at the start, and it's given way to a really nice sort of sweet, bready, biscuity malt base there. And there's actually just a little hint of caramel in there for this. But yeah, there's just an underlying sort of grassy character to it as well that seems to come out more at the uh, at the top of the mouth there, sorry. And the bitterness for this one sort of fades throughout. It goes away for the finish, but it's actually coming back a little bit more in the aftertaste with just a nice sort of little bit of citrus and piney sweetness there. And perhaps there is actually just, as I'm saying, there is that nice little bit of citrusy pine in there and it's coming back on the aftertaste. Quite an interesting one. I think this one is actually better in the bottle than it is on tap, to be honest with you. But yeah, as I say, it's coming in with a nice sort of bitter hoppy blast there. It's quite good for the pills and style actually, a really sort of good replication of the style I would say. But this one, as I say, it's coming in with a nice sort of bit of hot bitterness at the start and it's giving way to that nice sort of bready malts with just a nice little bit of caramel in there. And you've got a good bit of grassy character throughout this one that kind of comes up on the top of the mouth there and it has just that underlying citrus and piney element to it as well. A really, really nice sort of replication of the Pilton style of beer as you like. This one is actually a lot better on, ta on, uh, on in the bottle than it is on tap in my opinion. I wasn't very impressed with the tap version that I had in the brew pub but this is a lot better out of the bottle actually. Maybe it just needs to mature in the bottle a little bit of course. That could always be a thing. I think I've had this beer for maybe about 3-4 months or something like that so maybe it just is a case of it maturing a little bit but this is really nice. Yeah, really enjoying this one. But in terms of the mouthfeel, this one's quite light bodied, it's very easy drinking with just a little moderate bit of carbonation actually. It comes in with quite a little bit of an attack and then smooths out and it actually makes the beer quite crisp and it's very refreshing indeed. Yeah, the carbonation's coming in with quite a sort of little bit of an attack there and it smooths out. And it's making the beer quite crisp and it's actually, as I mentioned, very refreshing this beer. And there's a slight dry character on the finish just at the end there. And of course this is when you're getting the sort of nice sort of piney citrusy finish there with a bit of grassy character mixed in of course as well. Definitely more impressed with this one out of the bottle than I was on tap I have to say. So if you get the chance to try this on bottle rather than the tap I would recommend that you do that. But overall this is a very good beer. They've copied the Pilsen style very well. 
But in, in a way, I'm not sure whether to say if this is one of the better uh, Brewdog beers, if you like. If you're into lagers, it's definitely a very good lager to try. I'm not sure whether I prefer this one more than the 77 lager, but they're both very good beers. And of course, the 77 lager was intended to be a German Pilsner rather than a Czech Pilsen beer. So obviously there's that little bit of difference there. But this is another good beer from Brewdog. And you know, you're not going to be disappointed by very much that will come out of Brewdog at all, in my opinion. So give it a try if you get the chance. And as I say, I think this one's better out the bottle than it is on the tap, of course. So if you have the choice to try a bottle over tap, definitely go for the bottle, in my opinion. But I hope this beer review has been informative for you. I've enjoyed doing another Brewdog one, and it's interesting to find a beer that's actually better out of the bottle than it is out of the tap, of course. And I'm not sure as I say whether there's two varieties of this one filtered and one unfiltered the one that I had on tap was of course a lot clearer than this this beer to me looks as if it's been unfiltered so I'm not sure about that as I say possibly it's the case that it matures a little bit in the bottle and tastes a little bit better or something like that but overall a really good lager so if you're into the sort of craft ale takes on lager definitely give this one a shout but to Brewdog if you're watching please redo the 77 lager I really want to do a review of that and it was a beautiful beer when you did it but thanks again for watching my beer reviews as is usual please let me know in the comments section if you've tried this beer yourself always interesting to hear other people's comments on the beer but please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff i'll be back tomorrow with another brew dog beer review i'll probably do one of the experimental beers for you tomorrow and maybe another brew dog one of course because i've got a big stockpile of these but thanks again for watching my beer reviews and i'll catch you tomorrow cheers